So I went and I took a book called uh, Islam, the Religion of Truth. Yes. Yeah. Yes, I know this book. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And I started to read it. And I really liked the book. I really just, you know, yeah, I got attached to it. I read the whole book. This was on Thursday night. I read the whole book in an entire sitting. And I, I decided immediately after this book that I wanted to become Muslim. I said, this is the way. This is what I've been looking for. Alhamdulillah. And I knew before, even before this, that I wanted religion in my life. Yes. Like I said, I had, you know, I had the cross on my neck. Yes. Uh, before I was a Muslim, obviously. And then uh, uh, at that time, uh, also I used to try to read the Bible, even though I found it uh, boring, I couldn't read mm -hmm. it. But I knew I, I, had it, I had this... Inclination, this yeah, desire. Yeah, this, desire to, yeah. To, to be religious, yes. you know. And uh, when I read that, I said, no, this is the way. This is what I want. Obviously, the first thing that affected me was the issue of, of Tawheed, of Islamic monotheism and the one true God and the issue of Trinity not being possible and not being uh, something that uh, is suitable for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Yes. Not something that's suitable for God to be three in one. And, and when I read this, it affected me in a major way. I never heard this before. You know, yes. We grew up, you know, of three course. in one, you know. And all of a sudden, you know, I, I realized that what I'm reading is actually, this is the truth. And what, I, what I've been taught since a young boy, it's not. It's not true. It's yeah. simple as that. It's simple yeah. as that, yeah. yeah. So this is one thing that affected me. Another thing which you, you know, a lot of people might find strange, it really, really affected me is when he was talking about the author, he was talking about the prayer and how the Muslim prepares for the prayer, his, his five daily prayers, and, he, and the routine he goes through, the rituals he goes through to prepare himself for prayer. One of the things that he mentioned, was, or first of all, is that a Muslim uh, has to be in a place where nobody else can see him. He has to conceal himself mm -hmm. when he uses the bathroom. Yes. For me, this really affected me. Why? Because, you, as you know, Danny, you're coming from yes. America and uh, you came yes. to Islam just like I did. And maybe a lot of the, the viewers as well, they, they notice if they've been to the West or in some Western restaurants or what have you here, you'll see that they, when they relieve themselves. Openly. Openly, standing yes. next to each other. Yes, exactly. I always used to hate this. Yes. I couldn't say it before as an Muslim because they think it's not a because manly they thing. Think you, yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. They think you uh, something is wrong yeah, with yeah, you. Yeah, yeah. Exactly. But as a Muslim, alhamdulillah, we're proud of that. Exactly. This is, this is you know, uh, how we do. So subhanAllah, what happened is uh, this affected me. The second thing is they said that when a Muslim relieves himself, he sits down when he urinates. Yes. He sits down. And this also is not a manly thing yes, exactly. in, in the West. Even before Islam, the Prophet وسلم, Prophet Muhammad, may the peace and blessings of Allah be upon him, the, the Arab used to make fun of him because he used to sit down yes. and say this is not a manly thing, just like in our yes. customs in America. Exactly. So I used to love to sit down, which you're not supposed to, to do in, in America. Yes. You know? But so when I, sat, when I found the Muslims did this, it really affected me because it's something I've been doing all my life. Obviously, yes. when you're in the, in the bathroom behind <laughs> closed doors. Of course. So this and it affected me big time. Wow. And this is what Muslims don't realize is that, you know, when you implement Islam, the effect it has on the non-Muslims. And I'll tell you a quick story about an, an older lady who was in, in the United Kingdom. She worked in a university and her job was washing uh, the clothes and then ironing the clothes of the students. Mm. So she noticed I mean, that, I mean, and, this, and we will tell the viewers, maybe some non-Muslim viewers don't understand why we, a Muslim would sit down and, yes, yes, and go through exactly. all this trouble. This because when we stand in the prayer, obviously, that we don't want to have impurities on our clothes when we pray, because it's yes, not allowed in this. Of course. So we, a Muslim must sit down. Also, he must cleanse himself with water so he, uh, thoroughly so he uh, doesn't have impurities on his clothes when he prays. So this, uh, there was a Muslim student in this university who implemented this. He would sit down and he would clean himself with water thoroughly. So when his clothes would come in, there would be no stains mm. on, on his undergarments, on yes. his underwear. So all the other non-Muslim students who brought their clothes, they would have stains on their, uh, on their, on their yes, clothes. Yes, yes, yeah. I understand, yes, naturally. So, yeah, because they're not, you know. Because you're not uh, making the istinja, as we call it, yeah, or yeah. the purifying out, exactly. or using the water exactly. as the proper, yeah. So cleansing. when she saw this Muslim student never had stains on his, his undergarments, she was, you know, as they say, curiosity killed the cat. But in this, yes. in this, in this situation, actually, it saved the cat. Yes. Because what she did, she said, I have to ask this, this guy why he doesn't have any stains like all the other students. So she asked him. And she had been doing this job. She said, I've been doing it for 25 years, she told him. She said, you know, why are you different? He said, it's very simple because he said, the fact is, is I'm a Muslim. And I'm ordered that if I want to pray to do what? This thing, I have to clean myself thoroughly yeah. so I don't have impurities on my clothes so I can stand in the best of states in front, in front of God. So when she heard this, she said, a religion like this, it has to be the religion of truth. Allah so she, uh, mashallah, she became Muslim right after hearing yeah. uh, this, or after knowing this, this fact. And also, uh, this is one of the things 
that affected me majorly. So I decided the next day, I said I want to become Muslim. So I called my friend's father uh, that day, or very, in early in the morning actually. I said, I want to become Muslim. What do I do? He said, after Maghrib, you come to me. And, uh, oh no, before Maghrib. And it was like an hour before Maghrib. He said, catch mm -hmm. the metro and come to D.C. And we'll go to the Islamic Center in Washington, D.C. Yes. I don't know if you've been yes, there before. I've been yeah. to it several times. With yes. all the flags. Yes, and, yes yeah. exactly. Near the, uh, embassy, near the embassy row where we yeah, call yeah, it. Yeah, exactly, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. So I went there and Maghrib. I prayed Maghrib. I wasn't a Muslim at the time. I yeah. prayed Maghrib with the Muslims. I was just, you know, imitating what they're yeah. doing. You know? Just following them. Yeah, yeah. yeah, exactly. So after that, he said, no, we have a brother who wants to become Muslim. So I got up in front of the masjid, in front of the brothers, and I made my shahada, and I became Muslim. And that was in January, the beginning of January, 1994.